Okay, so what we're doing now is we're getting ready to install uh, a true choke thin wall set. Sa there's no difference between doing uh, chokes with thin wall or rem choke or wind choke or standard true chokes. Um, they all work the same way. Each set comes with five um, bushings so that you can match the bore of your barrel. The original choke has to be gone from the barrel before you start this process. Uh, we rent a reamer in 12 gauge for that. We rent a reamer in 20 gauge for that. And basically you go in and ream out the existing choke uh, so that you can start fresh. Uh, be aware some barrels have chrome lining, in which case you would need a carbide reamer. Uh, we have that in 12 gauge, not in 20, so that's a consideration. Um, basically what you do is you go through the bushings and see how they fit the barrel. And um, that one slips in nice and easy, but you can see it rattles and it's loose, so that's not going to work for us. And the reason this fit matters is because if the um, fit of the bushing is nice and close to the barrel, then you're less inclined to have chatter. That's a nice, perfect fit. Nice and close slip. No rattle. Uh, it still spins nice and free, but it's definitely a close fit. And that's what you want. You want the bushing to be completely free to move so that there's no danger of galling it or getting the reamer stuck or binding or anything like that because those are all things that could damage the reamer. Uh, you're going to use this bushing both on the reamer and on the tap so you'll interchange it from one to the next. Now that we've found the correct bushing we're going to go ahead and set up um, and this could be done uh, by hand. It's a long tedious process if you think about it this is a large cutting tool removing a lot of material uh, I know some guys do it by hand. I don't recommend it. It just takes a lot of time and it can be, you know, a little frustrating because you spend a lot of time standing there turning that tool. Um, it can be done with um, a power mechanism. I usually do it in the lathe simply because uh, that's available to me and it's a little bit more cost effective. Okay, we're all set up on the lathe and we're getting ready to do um, true choke. In this case it's a fin wall, although that makes no difference in terms of dimensions. They, all the choke reamers work the same way. The only difference is their diameters and their, the length of the cuts on the different reamers. And then of course whatever the tap thread is, so you want the right tap with the right reamer of course. But Other than that, they all work the same way mechanically, so what I'm telling you about this one is identical to all of them. So. Um, the way I do this on the lathe is, um, as I showed you with the uh, reamer we did earlier, we did the uh, facing of the barrel with the uh, uh, muzzle facing tool. Uh, same setup, basically. We're in the lathe. We're going to run in back gears at slow speed. Uh, you can power this tool some other way as long as you keep the RPMs down at a reasonable level because we're talking about cutting on a large surface area and at high speed uh, it can be uh, hard to get a good finish and uh, it's just not going to work as well. Uh, if you're trying to do it by hand, you can see this is a very large cutting tool with a lot of surface area and consequently it's going to take a lot of time to cut doing this by hand. It is possible to do it that way, but I want you to be aware that it's not going to be a real fast process simply because of the, the large surface area of the cutter. Um, that's pretty much all I need to tell you. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting. We um, The choke is already removed so you can see we're up on the tool already uh, and this is a, an area where the reamer will um, cut just enough to uh, make sure that the seat for the choke is the proper diameter. In this case it doesn't need to because the barrel is already slightly larger than that. Um, then you have this area of the reamer is going to cut the area uh, in this case where the threads will be and the, sh the sharp shoulder here would be the, the bottoming shoulder for the choke. This big shoulder back here is going to touch the muzzle of the barrel and uh, it can actually cut and square this if necessary, although that's not what I'm using it for. It, it, for us, it's just a stopping point. And in most cases, that's what people are going to um, treat that as, is just a place to stop. Um, with no further ado, we'll go ahead and, and uh, cut this. Basically, I'm just going to hold the barrel by hand. Uh, I'm going to use the lug, uh, and that's enough. Just keep your hand in a position where you can let go easily. If it were to grab, you don't want to be in a position where you'd be pinched between the machine and, and injure yourself. Um, that's pretty much it. I have the rear end of the barrel on a center and I did that by putting a spud in the breech of the barrel that has a center in it and um, that allows me to get past the, any extension that might be attached to the back of the barrel. 
most shotgun barrels have some kind of an extension so some kind of a centering tool that goes into the chamber is a good idea um, most people make these for themselves I believe you can buy them from Brownells and um, so here we go be sure to use good supply of cutting oil we don't want the tool to uh, take unnecessary wear and I'm going to use the tailstock to drive the, the barrel onto the tool Okay, so we've uh, stopped and cleaned the barrel a few times. We're several minutes into the job, and I basically just stopped, cleaned the reamer, and re-oiled it to um, show you where we're at. Um, what happens is when we get to the next shoulder, we're basically, we've already cut all of this. You'll see that when I slide it forward, it just slides right up there. Um, we're going to hit this next shoulder, and it's going to take a little bit more effort to cut, because now we're cutting on this shoulder and this shoulder, and we're removing this diameter plus this diameter. So we've increased the amount of material we're removing substantially. We have a fairly large amount of flute material, you know, flute space in, on this reamer, so you can go uh, easily 50 to 100 thousandths in a pass before you stop to clean. Because there's plenty of room for those chips to collect in the reamer and be carried away from the cutting edge. Uh, much more than 100 thousandths would probably be uh, a little much because you start to pack the flutes in my Tools cutting more on a couple of flutes than on others. That's not unusual. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a way to do it. Cut. Basically, you can see that we're nearly to the shoulder, which is the that's the final shoulder. That once that touches, we know we're to full depth for the chokes. If you don't allow that to touch the front of the barrel, then the the choke will protrude a little bit from the front. Uh, that might be desirable in some cases. I know some guys purposely do that. Most people would prefer that the choke be flush with the front of the barrel and that's actually the correct way to do it. So it's appropriate to have that shoulder just kiss the front of the barrel. Uh, we're going to make that final cut. thought maybe you'd like to be present for that. And uh, we'll just throw a little more cutting oil on here and away we go. And I'll be able to feel that. There it is right there. I can feel it come into contact. see a little bit of a chip come off. And again, that just uh, lets me know We've got it square and fully in contact. Okay, so here we are. We're tapping for our choke. A little oil on the tap, of course. We're actually already cutting. And as you can see, the tap wrench just makes it an easy job. This is uh, something I do recommend doing by hand. We transferred the bushing from the reamer to this tap to make a, a perfect fit, you know, so it matches up exactly as it did when we were reaming. And what's going to happen is when we get to the bottom of the area that we're tapping, I'll break the chip here. Um, when we get to the bottom of that, you'll feel it bump that shoulder and just stop cutting. You know, obviously, that's where you stop and back out and be done with it. Be sure to break that chip periodically as you're cutting. This doesn't take too terribly much effort. There we go, we've hit the shoulder. So you can see the tap doesn't necessarily go down all the way in. It's just going to where it bumps the shoulder, where the reamer uh, had, a, had that stop on it. So basically we're completely done now and we just back the tap out. <laughs>